there are five powers in the blood of Jesus that God the Father is about to uncover in your life. And in the uncovering, there's going to be a release of glory and manifestation that you've never experienced before. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Lift your hands and begin to pray for every single person watching online right now that the glory of God through a revelation of the blood would flow into their house. If you're watching online right now, I want you to begin to pray in the spirit. Let us know where you're watching from in the comments and what you're believing God for. What's your number one prayer request this season? Your number one prayer request. And I believe that God is about to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that is at work on the inside of you. I want to talk to you tonight. Oh, hallelujah. Can you keep praying in the Holy Ghost and be seated? You're going to have to get your Bible. You're going to have to get a notepad. You're going to have to get a paper because we're going to break down some things for you that are going to help you walk in absolute and total manifestation of the goodness of God in your life. How many of you have seen God's goodness at work in your life? Well, you ain't seen nothing yet. I'm about to break down for you five covenant blessings. Uh -huh. Not random blessings. Covenant blessings. If you're in the covenant, you have access to the blessing. Everybody say covenant. Five covenant blessings of the blood of Jesus Christ that's going to get released to you. And everybody say thanksgiving. Come on, write it in the comments, write it in your notes. Thanksgiving, one of the, one of the most dynamic powers available to believers and to the body of Christ because thanksgiving magnifies the gift that it acknowledges. That's why I felt led tonight to share with you about the blood of Jesus. And when you hear what it provides for you, it's going to give birth to thanksgiving that is then going to multiply the gift that it acknowledges. Say, thank you, Jesus. Philemon, verse number 6 is where we're going to be headed in our Bibles. Philemon and verse number 6. How you leave one year is how you go into the next. That's why that what you do in the final month of a year matters so much because what you do during that time is going to determine what gets birthed at the beginning of a new year and how you'll live out that new year in the goodness of God. And I don't know about you, but there's some miracles I didn't see in 22 that I want to see in 23. There's some breakthroughs I didn't see in 22 that I want to see in 23. So I've seen a little bit of trickle of manifestation in one area, but I want to see the fullness of the manifestation. I want to see it in 2023. Now, in order to do that, we've got to prepare the way. We've got to get ourselves ready to receive from the Lord, which is why on December the 30th, I think this is the first time I'm publicly announcing this. On December the 30th, the Terminal 2023, it's here, it's back, and we're going to break through into a new year with a prophetic word from heaven. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So Charlotte, get ready. Here we come. Those of you watching all across the nation around the world, get here. One night only for the Terminal 2023. So we're packing a whole bunch into one night Friday night, December the 30th. We're doing it that way so you can get back to your church or your family on the 31st. But on the 30th, Chris and Danielle Burns will be joining us to lead us in prophetic worship to break us through. Skylar Farley, who is in charge of an amazing campus ministry, is going to be with us to speak prophetically to the next generation. And then I'm going to be preaching a prophetic word for the new year, what God has shared with me concerning the coming year, 2023. You need to get there. You need to get there. Look at that graphic back there. Isn't that beautiful? Just look at it. Everybody say, it's coming. Registration is absolutely free, but you have to register. We need to know that you're coming. If you, there will be nursery, but if you're bringing a baby, we need to know because that nursery is limited. It's first come, first serve, and there's registration at ncrevival.com. 
And we want everybody to come and join with us. There, this is going to be a New Year anointing service. It's going to be radical. It's going to be wild. It's going to be outstanding. And we're preparing the way for the glory of the Lord to visit the city of Charlotte and the east coast of the United States so that it can sweep across the rest of the nation. How many believe you have an anointing to make that happen? Well, you proved it because you did it last year, and I wasn't even there. This is my first terminal. <laughs> so y'all be nice. It's my first time. Philemon chapter number 6 and verse number 6. Hallelujah. Excuse me. Verse number 6, not chapter number 6. If you find Philemon chapter 6 and verse 6, I wouldn't trust it if I were you. Of course, the way Bible translations are going nowadays, it won't be long. Well, that's another story for another day. Philemon, verse number six, that the communication of your faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you, in Christ Jesus. Before we pray over this message, can we read that verse again together? I want us to read it out loud together. Ready? Read. That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Father, be glorified. Reveal Jesus to us. Let the communication of our faith become effectual, full of power. And let there be a release of the anointing in this place and through this place to turn the world upside down. If you believe that, shout hallelujah two or three times and write amen in the comments. The church stands on the edge of one of the greatest challenges it has ever faced. And excuse me if I get loud. I feel like I need to shake you a little bit. And if I get a little too loud, then you get louder than I will, and I'll calm down a little bit. See, I want you to shout like that because I want to make sure you've got practice in when you're facing the biggest challenge you've ever faced in 2023. As we approach this, the Bible says that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our Bible studies. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our Sunday morning program and our praise and worship and a, and a super-powered nursery. No, no, no. This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. There must be an infusion of faith, not just regular faith, because as we've studied in weeks past concerning faith, you can have faith and it can be dead. You can have faith and it's crippled. You can have faith and it is not effectual, but here in Philemon, he's giving you a secret on how to make your faith effectual. Now, this is important concerning the blood of Jesus Christ because if the church doesn't return to a revelation of the blood, we are doomed to fade into obscurity and we will lose this generation to, to all of the worldliness that's out there and available to it. But if we will get a revelation of the blood, if we will get a revelation of Jesus, the life of Jesus, everybody say life. The life of the flesh is in the blood. The life of Jesus is in his blood. True life in Christ is in a revelation of the blood. But you can have faith in the blood that is dead faith that accomplishes nothing. It doesn't move. It doesn't breathe. It doesn't live. How do I resuscitate my faith? How do I make sure that my faith in the blood is a faith that is a living faith, a world overcoming faith? How do I do it? Here's what he says here in Philemon verse number 6. Let's look at it again. That the communication of your faith, everybody say, my faith, my faith must, be must be communicated. communicated. Clear concise communication cannot be done with a whisper in a dark corner somewhere with no one else around. Communication is a transfer of information. 
that the communication of my faith, that my faith would transfer information, revelation. And that the transfer or the communication of my faith would become effectual. Meaning, you can communicate your faith ineffectually. If we're being honest here tonight, how many of you have ever felt like that there were times where you felt like you weren't as effectual as you should be in the communication of your faith? You were witnessing, you were sharing something, and it just didn't seem like it was, you know, just not going over. It's like trying to sell hearing aids over the phone. It's just not, you know, it's like a pregnant pole vaulter. It's just not going over the way you think it should go, it's the way you think it should go over. So faith must be communicated, yes? Say that. So faith must be communicated, but it must be communicated effectually. How do I communicate effectually? That the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ, the anointed one, and his anointing, Jesus. The communication, I hope you're getting this online. If you're getting this, somebody write amen or something on, on, in the comments. Say, make it known. My faith must be communicated. It is important. Come on, hallelujah. Get louder, they're saying online. All right, here we go. Your faith becomes effectual by the acknowledging. Acting on the knowledge of acknowledging acknowledging every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. Something happens when you take time to acknowledge. Okay, you ever been in a place, it could have been a church service. Maybe it was a business gathering. Maybe it was on the job. Maybe it was a meeting of some kind and no one acknowledged you. How did that make you feel? What did it mean to acknowledge you? What does that mean to acknowledge you? It means to recognize you. Yes? It means to call out who you are and what you mean to this company, to this family, to this church. To acknowledge. So your faith becomes effectual by recognizing it. By recognizing it. We spend so much time recognizing what we're missing. We spend so much time recognizing what we do not have. We don't have time to be thankful for what we do have. And so you got a little bit of feeling back in your left arm, but you're still complaining that the rest isn't working. But if you will acknowledge... The little bit that came back and begin to thank him for that, you'll see that what you acknowledge will begin to multiply and increase. God has put faith in you. Acknowledge it. Call it out. Recognize it for the gift that it is. And there are so many things within the giftings and the callings that God has provided for us in our armory. That if we do not regularly acknowledge them, they will collect dust on the shelf. I, I love, listen, I love these TikToks that give you these hacks about Excel. You know, Microsoft Excel, and you go in there and you try to make things in there and what do you, tables, and, and you try to highlight stuff in there. And, you, and what you don't realize is you're going the long way around. And what these little videos do is they show you two buttons so that you can accomplish in two buttons what it normally takes you five minutes to do. How many things do you have access to, shortcuts, tools, secrets that you have access to that you do not use and you go the long way around? If we are going to grow in the power and the authority of the name of Jesus Christ, we're going to have to grow in the power and the authority of the revelation of the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to write down this passage of Scripture and I'm going to read it to you from the Message Bible, the book of Hebrews, chapter number 10, verses 19 through 23. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 19 through 23. Hallelujah. 
Let's see, Gma email admin at encountertoday.com. And there, yeah, Katie's already reading your comments. They will take care of you. Praise God. Everybody say, I got to acknowledge it. Yeah. See, I just acknowledged Gma. Yeah. Gretchen, yes. But I'm going to read the comment. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read the I'm going to acknowledge. When you acknowledge someone, what happens? Their ears perk up. Yeah. Right? When you hear your name, what happens to you? Yeah, yeah. That's the way the Spirit of God feels. When you begin to acknowledge the giftings that he's given you, all you got to do, that's one of the reasons why it's good to just pray over your food. Not to be religious. It's not like if you don't pray over your food, you're going to die. It's not even a command of God that every single time you have a meal in front of you, you recite this little religious prayer. It is an opportunity to acknowledge him and to take advantage of every opportunity to acknowledge him and call out, this is a blessing that I have received from heaven, and it is blessed. Here's what it says. So, friends, I love the way the Message Bible puts this. So, friends, we can now without hesitation, if you don't get excited about this and pray in the Holy Ghost over this verse, I'm about to read the Word of God to you. Are you ready? I mean, this is a message from God to you. Are you ready to receive it? No, 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 no. Are you ready to receive it? Are you ready to receive it online? Somebody type amen in the comments. Come on, share. Hit the thumbs up button right now, right now. Let's get ready. Here it is. Hebrews 10, 19 through 23. So, friends, we can now, without hesitation, walk right up to God. In the holy place, Jesus has cleared the way by the blood of his sacrifice acting as our priest before God. The curtain into God's presence is his body. Ooh. We are about to receive communion here. If you're watching online, all you have to do is get some bread or some crackers, some grape juice, or whatever you have that can in any way res resemble that. If all you've got is some water and some Ritz, then that'll work too. But here in a moment, we are going to partake of communion. And here he says that we have access into the presence through his body. The curtain into God's presence is his body. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. The curtain into God's presence is his body. So let's do it full of belief, confident that we're presentable inside and out. That's what his blood has accomplished. You don't have to be ashamed. The blood has made you presentable inside and out. Wow. Let's keep a firm grip on the promises that keep us going. He always keeps his word. Let's see how inventive we can be in encouraging love and helping out, not avoiding worshiping together as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the big day approaching. And my God in heaven, there's a big day, and it's right around the corner. There's coming a day soon and very soon when gravity is about to loose hold on some of us, and we're going to leave this planet like a metal to magnet, and we're going to suffer no more, cry no more, sigh no more, die no more. But until that time, we have many great and precious promises through the blood that we can receive a down payment on our promised redemption right here. Here and right now through Jesus, through faith in his blood, and by activating that blood, by acknowledging the blood. How many times did you acknowledge the blood this week? How many times? How many times did you acknowledge, recognize the blood of Jesus this week? Here's what I want you to get. Number one, number one, every believer has power through the blood. This is what we have to acknowledge. This is what we have to rehearse over and over and over again. And it doesn't even matter whether you feel it or not. If you'll just rehearse it before the Lord, it'll make all the difference. Number one, every believer has power through the blood to overcome all sin and bad habits. Why is it quiet in here like you ain't got no sin or bad habits that you need to overcome? Power to overcome. What you were 
struggling with before you met Jesus. Power to overcome what you battle on a daily basis. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 says, And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. I dare you just to lift a hand up to heaven and close your eyes right now and thank him for saving you from your sins. Yeah, thank him. We spend way too much time thanking him for saving us from our sickness and from all the things that, that we find uncomfortable and we ignore the fact that we don't have to participate in that sin anymore. It doesn't have to bind us anymore. The power of the blood has the power to redeem us from our sin. You have power to say no to sin because this is the hope of glory. Christ is. In you, you can say no to every addiction, no to every temptation, no to every sin. And when you do fall, you have an advocate with the Father who will forgive you of all your sins. The blood. Everybody say the blood. Every believer has power through the blood to overcome sin and bad habits. Number two, every believer has power through the blood to destroy the unfruitful works of darkness, the unfruitful works of Satan in your life. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy, annihilate, cause to cease to be as though it never existed, the works of of the devil not by screaming at the ceiling you're not going to overcome the works of the devil not by rolling around on the floor or putting on a great show but by getting a hold of a revelation of the blood by pleading the blood i'm here to tell you i know it's an old-fashioned message there is victory in the power of the blood of jesus christ over all the works of the devil say i have power, I have power. Over, satan over satan through the blood Number three, every believer has power through the blood that grants them access to the presence of God. Oh, how we take it for granted. But by his blood, we have access. Here's what it says in the message according to the book of Ephesians chapter 12. It's chapter 2, there we are again. Chapter 2, verses 12 through 13. But don't take, here's what it says, don't take any of this for granted. Look at your neighbor at the table and say, don't take this for granted. We do, don't we? Don't take this for granted. What? That it was only yesterday that you were outsiders. Outsiders to God's ways and didn't know the first thing about the way God works. Hadn't the faintest idea of Christ. You knew nothing of that rich history of God's covenants and promises in Israel. Hadn't a clue about what God was doing in the world at large. But now, because of Christ dying that death, shedding that blood, you who were once out of it altogether are in on everything. Don't take it for granted. It's powerful. Hebrews 10, 19 through 23 says that you can come boldly to the throne of grace by the blood. Don't take it for granted. The fact that as I'm preaching this, some of you are listening and say, well, I already know that. You've taken it for granted. You've taken it for granted. It's time to knock the dust off of these truths and begin to acknowledge them once again so that our faith can become effectual. Come on, if you're getting this, say amen. And somebody hit the thumbs up button right there if you're watching online. Come on, it takes two seconds. Hit thumbs up and hit the share button so that we can move forward. I'm not going to preach another word until you hit thumbs up. There we go. Okay, good. We got some. There they are. Pop, 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 pop. Good. <laughs> Jefferson City, Tennessee, in the name of Jesus, we're believing with you for your number one prayer request right now. And it is a glorious prayer request. Everybody say this. God answers prayer. 
Every believer has access to the presence of God to receive answers to prayer. Let me tell you what you need first and foremost when you go before the Lord is wisdom. If you're asking for a thing and not asking for wisdom, you're out of order. Whatever you're believing for, seek God for wisdom, and then the thing will come. We were praying for our son. Our son, when he was born, for the first 18 to 24 months of his life, he was sick every other week. Every other week, sick in his body. Horrible ear infections. And if you've never seen a newborn or an infant or a young child with ear infections, you don't know the pain that you're going through. Some medicines they gave him had a negative reaction to those medicines. Swelled up all over his body. Two years of battling with it. And we were asking for the thing. But there came a moment when we recognized that whenever you ask God for a miracle, he will give you an instruction. He will impart wisdom. And we went before the Lord with a seed in our hands. We've been asking and asking and asking. But we got a financial seed in our hand. And we laid it on the altar and said, Lord, we're believing you for divine wisdom. Supernatural wisdom. Within 24 hours... The Lord spoke one word to my wife within 24 hours. We applied that word of wisdom, and he went the next seven years without so much as a sniffle. It may have been 10 years. I don't know. It was was years that he went without so much as a sniffle because we applied that one word. And he never, they wanted to cut, they wanted to cut my baby boy. And do surgery because of the ear infections. I said, no, in the name of Jesus, I refuse that. The Bible says he gives wisdom to those who seek it, and he abradeth not. And we receive that wisdom. I want to pray for you right now for supernatural wisdom to be released into your life. Whatever you've been battling with, I know you've been looking for the thing, but take a step back from that and say, Lord, you said if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, and he will pour it out and abrade not. So right now, Lord, we believe you for supernatural and divine wisdom. Give us a word that will bring us through victoriously and bring the manifestation to pass quickly in Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time through the power of the blood that we return to the place of prayer. Every believer, number four, has power through the blood to do uh, the works of Christ and greater works. Not because you're so amazing, because of the blood. Galatians chapter 3 says, The blood shed on the cross was not the end, but rather a consummation from which God would launch an initiation. What initiation? That the works that I do, John 14, 12, shall you do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. Every believer has power through the blood to do the works of Jesus Christ. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number five. Every believer has power through the blood to possess healing and to walk in sound health. Every single believer has power and access through the blood to possess healing and walk in sound health. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 26 through 30 says, For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many do sleep, because they do not understand the power of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In a moment, we're about to release that power into your life, and we're going to release it all over the country and around the world by acknowledging the power of the blood of Jesus. If you have your elements, I want you to get them ready. I want you to get, get your elements ready. Those of you who are at the table, you, you have them at the table. You can begin to distribute them. Don't partake of them just yet. The blood gives us weapons. The book of Exodus, I believe it's chapter number 14. The Bible says that their enemies came after them and chased them into the Red Sea. But how many of you know what happened when the enemy came after them into the Red Sea? They came up on the other side, and the Red Sea consumed their adversaries. Everybody say Red Sea. Everybody say Red Wave. 
a red wave. We're not talking about some sort of political agenda. We're talking about a wave of the blood of Jesus, a revelation of the blood of Jesus. And you know what happened? The Bible said that the corpses of the Egyptians came up on the shore. But that's not all that came up on the shore. I can guarantee you all their weapons came up on the shore too. So now the children of Israel had an arsenal at their disposal through the power of the blood. Hallelujah. They had an arsenal at their disposal through the power of a red wave. Come on. Come on. Come on, somebody. We have weapons through the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, we've talked about the shed blood. Now, we're going to do the sprinkling of the blood. There is a difference between the shedding of blood and the sprinkling of blood. You getting this? The shed blood speaks to covenant. The sprinkling of blood speaks to the application of the covenant. The shed blood is gory and it is messy. The sprinkling of the blood is deliberate. It is intentional and it is focused. The shed blood can only happen once with one sacrifice, but from that one sacrifice, sprinkling can go on continually. So you can acknowledge the shed blood, but until you sprinkle the blood, until you apply the blood, until you intentionally and deliberately with focus sprinkle it on every single area of your life, there'll be no power. But now you have the elements in front of you. And Jesus said, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. What is the purpose of communion? Acknowledgement. Because in the acknowledgement, faith becomes effectual. When it is not acknowledged, when it is routine, when it is ritual, then, then faith is not effectual. And therefore, many are weak and sickly among us, and many do sleep. But if we will take a moment now and truly and humbly acknowledge him here at the table, acknowledge the power of his broken body and the stripes on his back, and acknowledge the power of the blood, there can be a release of the anointing of God and the glory of God that can destroy every yoke, remove every burden, and save every house. Did you know that right here, right now, in this moment, you can apply the blood to your house and you and your house shall be saved. Oh, hallelujah. Father, hold up the bread right now, right there where you are. Hold up the bread. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that was broken for us by his stripes. We are healed, and we take this broken body, and by consuming it as his body, we remember him. We bring him to manifestation now. We touch his body here in this moment. More than the hem of his garment, we consume his body. And as we do, it will energize us, heal us, and deliver us. You can partake of the bread. You ready for a red wave? Hallelujah. Those of you online, you ready for a red wave? Ah, this is the cup of the new covenant. A new covenant. I mentioned the other day concerning the, the catching away of the saints, the revelation and the mystery that was revealed to the Apostle Paul, which is the consummation of the fulfillment of our bodily redemption. Huh. Can't wait for that day. And I said it is important for you to recognize because it's often miscommunicated that God does not promise to deliver every one of his people from every one of his acts of judgment or wrath. That is not his promise. That is not what we see historically. His people are not, generally speaking, protected from his wrath, generally speaking. Look throughout the Old Testament. You see his people subject to his wrath all the time. But in the Old Covenant, there was a special group of people. There were certain individuals who had a special covenant that for whatever reason, God could not pour out his wrath if they were in the general vicinity. Noah had to be preserved, locked away for seven days before the rain could fall and the flood could come. 
Lot had to be removed from the city. And we've got all kinds of comments of people saying, a special covenant, that's a new one. Listen, honey, if you don't think the new covenant is special, there ain't nothing I can do for you. But through the blood of Jesus, we have a special covenant, and those who apply it will be delivered from the wrath to come. Father, we thank you for the covering power of the blood. We lay hold of a red wave right now in the name of Jesus through our life to consume our enemies. God, as this red wave goes down into our bodies, as we consume it here in this place, I thank you it consumes our adversaries. In the same way it swallowed the Egyptians, let it swallow up cancer. In the same way it swallowed up the enemy, let it swallow up diabetes and depression. Let it swallow up every hindrance to us possessing the promises you have for us as we acknowledge the power of the blood that has the power to heal us, deliver us, give us access into your presence, give us power over sin, give us power over the devil. We lay hold of all of the blessings and the powers, the five powers of the blood that we've discussed tonight to possess and walk in divine health and to do the works of Jesus. We partake of it now in Jesus' name. Partake of the cup. Yeah, bless him, bless him, bless him. All right, lift those hands and worship him. Whether you have elements available to you, maybe you're driving down the road, maybe you don't have them, just lift your hands and worship him now. Worship him. You can partake of his body, partake of his blood just by acknowledging right now. Just acknowledging right now. We thank you for the shedding of blood, Lord. And now we sprinkle it onto our hearts, onto our homes onto our minds, onto our finances. We sprinkle it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Would you take a second right now and join hands with the people at your table and pray in the Holy Ghost or put your hands on their shoulder if you can reach that, whatever is more convenient. Just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost over them and their needs right there, right there. Those of you watching online, I don't know what you're praying for this holiday season. I don't know what you're looking forward to. But in Jesus' name, we stand in faith with you. And we release this revelation into your life so that you can possess the promises of God. We speak breakthrough over your house now in Jesus' name. Breakthrough this holiday season. Breakthrough in every area of your life. Break! And as they pray over here at these tables, you pray for one another. Come and join us December the 30th. December the 30th in Charlotte, North Carolina for the Terminal 2023 with Chris and Danielle Burns leading worship. Skylar Farley ministering to the youth of this next generation. And I'll be declaring the prophetic word for the new year. One night only, December 30th. Registration is free, but you have to register. Go to ncrevival.com and come be a part. Come join with us. Bring your friends. Bring your family. It's going to be a Holy Ghost anointing service for the new year. So you go into the new year in victory in the name of Jesus. Now lift those hands to heaven and thank him for what he's given you. Thank him for what he's given you. And now ask him, Lord, what can I give you? What can I give you? This Thanksgiving season spent so much time buying things for other people and buying things in preparation for this, that, or the other. Lord, what can I do for you here in this holiday season? We're about to receive the offering here in the name of Jesus, but we have a very special offer right now. This coming Friday night at 7 p.m., I'm going to be doing an interview with Dr. Rod Parsley on Encounter Today. Come on, somebody. And he's going to be discussing a prophecy concerning the end time revival, but in that interview, we're going to go deep into the history. You may not know he was a Baptist pastor that he and his church got baptized in the Holy Ghost in one service. The whole church baptized in the Holy Ghost. 
We're going to show you footage. We're going to show you clips. We're going to show you clips of other Baptist pastors getting baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're going to show you the history of that movement and this historic interview. You're going to see Dr. Rod Parsons. You've never seen him before. But he's released just an outstanding book called Revival If that is just, I've never, I've never seen an exposition of Chronicles 714 like this before. If my people which are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. The history in this book and everything is outstanding. And we're making it available to you for a gift of any size. Somebody say thank you. Thanks. It is Thanksgiving after, what, after all. So pray about that. what that would be. Go to EncounterToday.com. And when you sow into the special offer, then you'll receive that book. We'll send that to you for a gift of any size. And don't forget, we're going to be airing that interview Friday at 7 p.m. We'll be on there live praying for you. It's going to be powerful, powerful, powerful. How many of you are thankful for our online audience? Go to EncounterToday.com, get all the information, and we'll see you this coming Friday night with Dr. Rod Parsley. God bless. Hallelujah.